Welcome to the Lipper Technical Institute. I'm Charlie and I'll be your technical trainer. Today we'll be covering the Flomax SS Kitchen pull down faucet and its installation, operation, maintenance, and troubleshooting. So here it is out of the box and I wanted to identify some of the parts on here. So you'll notice two metal braided lines, one that's for hot and one that's for cold water. And also a line here that allows the faucet to be pulled up into the housing. And then there's a metal collar here with two screws, a metal washer, and another rubber washer on here, and a lever here for hot and cold water, and the faucet itself. And you'll also notice a weight here that goes on this line that allows it to pull the faucet back inside and a tool here that'll allow you to replace your aerator. Now let's take a look at the tools necessary to install it on your RV. For this installation, you'll need a wireless drill, a flashlight, a Phillips screwdriver, adjustable wrenches, tape measure, a pencil to draw lines with, now you'll also need a one and a half inch hole saw, a bucket, and safety glasses. Now let's head out to the RV and get started. Depending upon the uniqueness of your sink and faucet combination will dictate where you actually drill your hole. So for in our instance, we have a center drain sink here. So we're going to measure over and make a mark right in the center. And that for our 14 inch is obviously seven inches here. And now the uniqueness of our faucet will dictate that we measure back as we're trying to get that exact flow from the spout of the faucet that goes right down the drain. I'll make that inch and a half measurement. And that will be our center mark for our hole. Now that we have that marked out, we're going to take this drawer out and get our safety glasses on. Now what you're going to need is a one and a half inch hole saw to cut your hole. If you're replacing a faucet instead of adding a brand new one, first you're going to need to shut off the water supply to the faucet. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn on the faucet and then turn it back off. That's going to relieve the pressure in the lines. Then you're going to bring in a bucket or a suitable container depending upon the space you're actually installing the faucet so you can catch the water that drains out when you open them up. Then you're going to disconnect the mounting hardware from the faucet and remove it from either the sink or the countertop, depending upon which install you have. Once that faucet is removed, make sure that the area that you're going to put the new faucet in is dry and free of debris. Now we're going to install this faucet onto the countertop. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna pull this metal collar and this metal washer off so we can slide that in. We'll set those aside. Now we're going to thread these lines through the pre-cut drill hole that we did. Slide that down in there. Now we can install this on the right hand side where you're on off handle here is on the right hand side or we can put it on the left hand side as well depending upon your preference however if you put it in the middle you're going to be at risk for scalding yourself with your hand in the middle there now let's go ahead and secure the faucet to the countertop with this hardware now that the faucet's ready to be installed on the countertop we're going to use this metal washer and the metal collar and 
slide these over the hoses and we'll slide them over the braided lines too. Now we're going to spin that metal collar up and secure the faucet to the countertop. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure that the faucet itself is exactly where you want it to be because once this is tightened up against the countertop, that's where the faucet will be permanently. So once you get the collar all the way tight, then you're going to want to use a Phillips screwdriver and tighten those Phillips screws to the metal washer. Now that we have the faucet secure to the countertop, we want to hook up the water supply lines from the RV to the hot and cold lines of the faucet itself. So now these are hand adjustable lines, but you might need an adjustable wrench for this. Now let's go ahead and put the weight on the braided line. This will give your faucet head the ability to retract on its own. So I'll do that and you're going to want to make sure that the braided line is free and clear from your other lines. Now you can test it by pulling down the faucet head and retracting back. Now that the water lines are secure, go ahead and turn the water on and check for leaks. Now let's clean everything up, put our drawer back in and head back to the classroom. Now let's talk about troubleshooting. Now vibrations can cause an awful lot of problems with an RV and its plumbing while it's driving up and down the road. So the first thing that you're going to do if you have any of these issues, you're gonna go ahead and tighten all that hardware in your plumbing lines. However, if you still have these problems, let's go through these one at a time. First one, irregular flow. You could have blockage at the screen. For the second one, there's a leak from the aerator when the faucet is on. Make sure you reinstall the aerator. It could be crooked in there. Now the aerator has an irregular or reduced water flow. What you're gonna do there is you're gonna remove the aerator and clean the debris. Now for maintaining your faucet, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you clean the faucet periodically with a soft cloth. Now, what you don't wanna do is use harsh chemicals, steel wool, or abrasive cleaners. This concludes the Better Bath Faucet aftermarket installation video.